Okay, so first I'm going to play a couple clips from the sentencing hearing because I wanted to zoom in and, and I think there was a couple parts that during when it was live they didn't show her face and then when they re-uploaded it they did on a couple parts. At least what I'm I'm not remembering a couple of the parts like when the judge first stop, talks or when the prosecutor is talking at first they show her. Um, I don't remember that happening on the live. I could be wrong but I wanted to zoom in anyway, play a couple clips of like her basically her reactions and then I will go over the new stuff with the update that is in the title. All right, Ms. Van der Ark, have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report and the attached guidelines? Yes, sir. Any additions or corrections that you have? Yes, sir. Gotta... Okay, Mr. Roberts, I believe we have um, some individuals here who wish to make victim impact statements. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. The uh, two older siblings of Timothy Ferguson, with the exclusion of Paul, uh, would like to make a statement. Okay, um, they may um, come forward, and, and whoever wishes to speak first may go ahead and they can stay there. They can come to the podium. It's completely up to them. So it's Millie Ferguson that's going to be first. Okay. And uh, just for the record, I think Miss Ferguson actually wrote a letter as well. I believe, and I believe it's included. Yes. Yeah, I, I have read that's attached to the PSI, but I'm certainly she's certainly welcome to make a statement. That's right. Thank you, George. <clears throat> um, I want to preface this by saying that those of us involved in the justice system, including the defendant, know what sentence the court is going to impose here, at least for that first degree murder charge. And it is a sentence which is as warranted in this case as ever there was a case. That life without parole is the only sentence that Ms. Van der Ark should receive. I, I wanted to stand here for two reasons. I wanted to stand here, up here at this podium, next to Millie and next to Nolan as they gave their statements for two reasons. One, to show that we support them, that we support whatever whatever statement they wanted to make here today. But I also wanted to see Ms. Van der Ark. She didn't look over at her kids once. Not once during this entire process did she look over at her children. And that speaks volumes because this case has always struck me that it's impossible as a parent let alone as a human being, to understand the depths of the depravity that it took for us to come here today. All of the things that she did, or all of the things that she withheld, or all of the things that she directed her other son to do, are so, so callous and so cold that they just defy explanation. And I convinced myself that the only thing that could make any sense is that on some level, she had stopped thinking of her children as human beings. And frankly, her not looking over and not, not even wanted to express some type of emotion or some type of remorse or, or some type of recognition of those two older children that she had a hand in raising and who spoke so eloquently and so beautifully and so passionately here today, just reflects what I guess we, already feared and already knew about Ms. Van der Ark. Very few people, I think, in this courtroom have the experience of going into a jail to meet your client for the first time. I know Your Honor has. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a strange feeling to go in there because usually when we go in there, Judge, we've read a police report. And in some of those cases, it describes something just horrible. It's just, just a terrible thing that's happened. And we go into those jail cells and we see this client and we're looking, we're looking because we're expecting to see horns and the, and the tail and the pitchfork. That's, that's what the, is being described. And we get in there and we see just a person who is now facing jeopardy due to the worst thing that she's ever done in her life. And whatever else has made this person that way is, is not in the guideline scores. In my client's case, Judge, uh, as you've read the pre-sentence and the people have read it and it's been admitted, um, her father, her biological father, my client's biological father, died when he, she was eight years old. And he also sexually and physically abused her, which means he began before she turned eight. And as the court is aware, we don't catch these guys the first time, and especially when force and violence is used, they can hide their transgressions for years. 
once this man is out of her life, another man comes into her life, her stepfather, who does the same thing until she's old enough to move out of the house. The court is also aware that my client has also been, uh, had the burden of mental health issues. And quite frankly, the reality is when people are conditioned to believe that that's the sort of treatment that they deserve by their father and their stepfather and their, their mother's not gonna protect them, or, they tend to, to seek out that sort of abuse in the spouses. So the, so the abuse continues all through her, the youth of her life until she finally frees her, herself of this man. Okay, I just want to make a comment on this. So is she talking about Eric, her ex-husband? Because she's, he's talking about she finally frees herself. She puts herself through uh, law school and stuff. And that was after her divorce with Eric. So is she trying to say that Eric was an abuser too, I wonder? Just a thought. I mean, an abuser to her. She's, you know what I'm saying? He's going on to say how she sought out relationships of people that were the same of what they did to her, you know, what her father and stepfather did to her. So she's claiming that Eric abused her too, it looks like. What do you guys think about that? And what does she do when she frees herself? She puts her, she, without resources, she has no wealth, without resources, she puts herself through college. She puts herself through law school. She not, not just puts herself through. She's second in her class in college, and she's second in her class in law school. And she has, what, eight book, eight, eight cool. books from, from law school, which she's, you know, jokingly told me this twice when her, her stepfather had. They, they talked about those things. She can, goes on and she provides a home for her three children and her ailing husband without, while going to school full time, while being a mother full time, while working full time, she does all these things. But she makes a mistake. She makes one decision she shouldn't have made. She says yes. She has no criminal history. She, I, I couldn't find a speeding ticket. She, she, she. Oh my God, this girl is ridiculous. Like she is so full of herself. So when he says he couldn't even find a speeding ticket, she shook her head like, nope, like you're not going to find one. That's me. Um, You have nothing to be proud of, Shonda. You should be ashamed of yourself. Here, I'll, I'll replay that part again if you guys didn't see. Watch her shake, his, shake her head when he's talking about how, oh, I couldn't even find a speeding ticket on her. She has no criminal history. She, I, I couldn't find a speeding ticket. She, she, she. She raised dogs. She, she, she did Herculean stuff. When she got that phone call telling her that Timothy is either going to come to her or he was going to go into foster care, she says yes. Had she said no, I already have a house full of people I can't afford. I don't, we don't have the resources. Had she said no, my husband's sick. I have a 20-year-old son who's still living off us, living, sleep on the couch. Had she said no, Timothy would be alive today. And he would probably be in the, the, the loving care of a foster family, probably who, someone who could take care of kids with special needs. Had she said no, with her academic backgrounds, and quite frankly, given the, the fact of uh, she has a relative in the legal profession who's highly regarded in the profession, she would now be practicing law. And probably be doing very well at it given her academic abilities but she didn't say no she did what moms do so that's my boy my baby i'm taking him home and i'm bringing him into the house she brought him in knowing that she shouldn't have him there because she doesn't have custody she brought him in knowing that she couldn't get him into schools and get him in the mail because she didn't have custody her ex-husband was not going to assist her in that she got brought him in knowing she wasn't going to get any more financial assistance it wasn't her intention for us to be here. It was never her intention. Something broke. If something, ha if she said no, or if we wouldn't be here, something broke. Judge, it's, this case makes no sense to anybody. There is no gain for her from this conduct. And if, and again, if, if, if the court, Hurt those the transcripts of those those emails those those uh, text messages. 
she and Paul are unaware of the damage. They, they, just, they don't see it. How could you not see it? Because something's broken. There's no specific intent here. There's no intention. Her intentions was to mother her kids like she did the other two children that were in her home household. That was her intention. Her intention was to provide, as she did with the other two kids. They're, they're, you don't see this with the other children. This is just this, something about this boy and this woman broke. 20, 30, 30 years ago, we didn't know about postpartum depression. 20 years ago, we didn't know about postpartum psychosis. Someday, somebody's going to tell us what's wrong with this woman and why anyone would be capable of what she did. Somebody, someone's going to explain it. 400 years ago, we burned people like her at the stake because, it, because the blood lust was there. And that's what made people feel better. And that's what people, that was their solution to a horrible situation. Well, there is Mr. Roberts' description of this offense. Nothing's inaccurate. Nothing he said do I disagree with. But I think you have to add in the part that something's, something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. And even if we can't put a label on it, we all know it. This is her. This, Timothy was her blood son. This wasn't some child. This wasn't a financial gain. This wasn't a stranger. This was her, her blood. She gave birth to this boy. And yet she was able to do what she did. Something's broken. The, the human mind just is is its capacities and its reasonings. I don't claim to understand, but I can we can look at her her life before then and the circumstances and they come together and, and unfortunately Timothy is the victim of it. That we get that. But the idea that this is premeditated or she intended oh, when she they find the, the video show when she 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 was surprised. She was surprised when he passed. Something's something's amiss. And I'm asking the court to respond to that reality. The easiest thing would be to exceed the guidelines. But I'm asking the court to do the hard thing, and that is to respond to reality. This is a person who, if she had said no, 10 years from now she'd be practicing law, and people would be asking her to come and speak at high schools to talk about how you overcome what you've overcome, the mental health issues, the, the, the abuse from man after man after man. This, is a, this is a, was a survivor and a person who pulled herself up by her own bootstraps, no resources, all on her own, all her effort. This is what she's done as well. And it's unfortunate. It's, it's horrible for Timothy. And it's horrible for her. All right. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Ms. Vander Ark, do you wish to say anything prior to sentencing? <coughs> well, first and foremost, uh, for the individuals here to speak on uh, Timothy's behalf, I appreciate you being here. Uh, it kind of struck me throughout the trial, you know, who, who was here for Timothy. And uh, at one point in time, I worried that we may not have anyone to give a victim impact statement. And uh, that, to me, was made me very uh, sad, quite frankly. Horrified more than anything, but quite sad. And I'm happy uh, that two individuals took time to be here uh, from miles across the country. And uh, out of the horrible situation, uh, that makes me feel a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit better. Uh, if, if after the documentation, you can certainly ask for a restitution hearing and to, to contest that amount. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything else for the record, Mr. Roberts? No, thank you, Judge. Mr. Johnson? No, sir. All right, we're adjourned. Okay, so I'll play that part again for you because I want to know, I want you guys to know what was going on there. So right before that, they were talking about uh, like this restitution for this I'm not sure what, the, I forget what they called it, but some foundation or whatever that helps victims. It's like a victim's help, like relief help or whatever so they help victims and um ba they basically paid for the funeral costs for timothy so they said it was five thousand dollars and now they are the prosecutor was ordering shonda to pay for it and then the judge says but we could send you the the documents and the order and then you could 
asked for a restitution hearing, okay? So she's basically asking, she's telling him, yes, I want to ask for a hearing. And then she says something like, well, that ke that'll keep me from ordering anything. That'll keep me from ordering stuff. So she's worried about ordering commissary because if she has to pay that 5000 she probably doesn't have too much money. It, it, she won't have any money left, I'm guessing. Yes, Okay, guys, so just a quick update. So now this makes sense. Remember when they were talking about the thing tomorrow that they kept saying like, uh, okay, we'll talk about it in court tomorrow or whatever. And then we thought, oh, wait, are they going to even sentence today? Because, you know, they're at least I heard tomorrow. That's why I was thinking, wait, is this going to go on two days? Well, this is why. It was a different trial that she's, that she's in right now. So it was Tuesday and Wednesday, they said. So I don't know if it's tomorrow too. I'm not sure what the verdict was yet. I don't think there was one yet. I could be wrong, but they said Tuesday and Wednesday so far. So, and it's not televised because it's, you know, involving children. But here is the article about what was going on. So it's basically Norton Shore's woman is fighting to keep parental rights for other child. The woman convicted of killing her son wants to be able to make decisions for her other child. There are new details in the case of the Norton Shores woman who was convicted of torturing and killing her son. On Wednesday, 13 on your side, learned that Shonda Vander Ark is trying to keep her parental rights even after she goes behind bars for the rest of her life. This all started when officials were responding to the initial scene when Vander Ark's son, Timothy, was found dead at their home back in July of 2022. When officials arrived, Child Protective Services were called in because a minor was living in the home. Out of fear of future harm, officials said CPS filed a petition to remove the child from the home and place them into the care of their relatives. Since then, Vander Ark has been fighting the possible termination of her parental rights. Because she will spend the rest of her life behind bars, she would be allowed to decide on things like how often her child will be required to visit her in prison, and who the child would stay with permanently if she is allowed to keep her rights. If she loses these rights, it will allow the relatives the opportunity to adopt a child. The trial began on Tuesday after she was sentenced to life in prison and continued on Wednesday. So I don't know what the verdict is. I don't know when. I'll try to keep a, keep an eye on it and see when they uh, announce the verdict. I don't even know how to get the verdict because it's not going to be public. You know, at least the trial isn't. So I'll just keep checking and see, guys. Let you know what I find out. Just wanted to share that with you. Let's pray that she does not keep right her the rights, though. Because dang it. She wants to freaking control them being in prison? No way, dude. No freaking way. I could see her making G like come so many days and like abusing him verbally. You know what I'm saying? Because she won't be able to physically because she'll be watched. But I could see her being a verbally abusive, controlling, and just the monster that she is, controlling everything he does from as much as she can from behind bars. No, I do not think she will get it. I do not think she'll be able to keep her rights. I really don't think they're going to let her. So I wonder if, is it the same judge, I wonder, for this? Probably not, though. My understanding is Ms. Vander Ark has another matter which is being uh, handled in front of a different judge at this time. That case is not going to resume, not going to finish today and she will be here at least until tomorrow. Okay, classic Tiffany here. I freaking turned off my mic. So <laughs> the ending, <laughs> I was on mute. Anyway, what I was saying is this is all that I have in this video. And um, I'm almost done with those clips from the incident report. I think I have two more at the most. I might just have one more. I don't know if I'll do the other one or I'm not sure. Um, if I'll do like the uh, like the basically like odd and ends type uh, part, just random things or not. And then also those other documents that I wanted to make some pre-records. I went over it on a live though, th these other documents, but it was like r at the end of a live and it was really quick. So I was going to kind of, you know, make them a little bit better. Or maybe I, we could do it on a live. I don't know. I I'll have to decide on those how I want to do them. But anyway, plus I have a treat for you guys. Well, I don't have it yet. It's th about this case but it'll be on its way soon and uh, I'll talk to you guys a little bit later about it, but I'm very anxious to get it. So mm, yeah, it'll be interesting.